Now today, <clears throat> I'm going to be checking the pinion depth. And what I got here is a universal pinion depth checker. Um, sold by uh, Proform. Comes with instructions on how to use it. It's a little bit confusing the first time you go to use it because uh, how it's, I don't know, just to me it seems like it's confusing. Maybe it's not, I don't know. But <clears throat> first thing you got to do is you got to determine if your carrier bearings, which are these races right here, which go on here on the differential carrier. <clears throat> These are the outer races right here. First thing you have to do is determine if your parting line in the differential housing is on center or above center or below center. <clears throat> so what you have to do is you have to put the one inch extension on here and then you take your one inch checking fixture and you press this up on here and you you set your dial indicator to zero okay let me adjust this a little bit here all right as you can see right there we're on zero okay that's the first thing you got to do <clears throat> and then what you got to do get a dial caliper here is you have to measure the OD of your bearing race. Turn this on, make sure it's zeroed, yep. You have to measure the outside diameter of your bearing race. I'll slide this up here. And the outside of this bearing race is 3 inch 064. So then you divide that in half, and half of 3 inch 064 is 1.532. <clears throat> so you write that measurement down 1.532. Okay. And then what we have to do is we have to go over to the differential housing, the rear end housing, and we have to measure <clears throat> the deepest part where this sits in the case, like this here, it's going to be on here, where the deepest part of this bearing race is in the housing, and record that number. <clears throat> So I'll bring you over to the rear end housing. We'll do that quick and I'll be right back. All right, over at the rear end housing here. This is this little fixture right here is also part of what comes in the kit. And you bolt this down to your parting line for your bearing cap. <clears throat> and then you have to take this dial indicator here and sweep it back and forth on your race till you find you find a low spot <clears throat> which is going to be looks like that there you sweep it back and forth till you find your low spot kind of hard to do hold two things at once here all right I think I got it okay you sweep that back and forth like that there till you find the low spot you can see the low spot is right there that's the very bottom of your bearing race and you read that number that's uh one inch 527 from the 
from your center line. Now, if your parting line, your your parting mark, parting uh, area here for your cap is perfectly on center, this would read one inch five thirty two, but it's not. This is actually lower than the center line of the bearing. So that why that's the reason why it reads one inch five twenty seven. So you have to when you put this on there, you have to take that number, which is five thousandths, and you need to add that number to your measurement from here to your pinion. And uh I'll I'll bring it back and I'll show you that. Um, just a minute okay back at the bench now what I got to do is I got to take this one inch extension off of my dial indicator and put the three inch extension on which is this one that's the medium length one that's in that kit screw this in here tighten it down <coughs> and you take the meat the the next longest checking fixture and you set this on here and you you zero your dial indicator again set that to zero right there right like that it's on zero okay and then we go back to the rear end housing and we measure from that fixture that's attached in the rear end housing to our pinion. And one other thing I wanted to point out too, when you put this checking fixture on your dial indicator and you zero it, you you want to make sure that your little in that your little dial is lined up right on one. It's got to be on one because you need that for your reference on this next portion we actually need it need to do it on for the other two but um, um, for the next part of this that's very important so <clears throat> I'll see you back at the differential housing okay <clears throat> it's showing um, It's showing that particular depth at one inch twenty nine thousandths. <clears throat> okay. Now you have to take that number and you subtract it from the three inch. Okay, we'll go back over okay. the bench. We take 3.0 minus 0.129, which is 129 thousandths. And that gives us 287.1. And we have to add the 5 thousandths to it. Plus 0 0.005 equals... 270, two, two inch, 876. Two inch, 876. Okay. Now my rear end is marked two inch, 859. <clears throat> So the pinion is actually too deep in the housing now. <clears throat> the pinion gear doesn't have enough shim. It's actually set too far down in the housing now because it's at two inch, 876 is what I'm measuring. And the gear is marked with the correct pinion depth of 
So we take 2.876 minus 2.859 equals 17 thousandths. So the, the pinion gear has to be shimmed up 17 thousandths. So what I'm going to do now is, I'll do it off camera, is I'm going to press the pinion gear back on, measure the shim, and I'm going to add 17,000 shim to it, and then uh, put the gear back in, and we're going to remeasure it, see where how it comes out. And I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, got you back over to rear end housing here. Uh, the pinion's back in. I got that. I added a 19,000 shim. Um, that was the closest I had. <clears throat> and now our reading is uh, 140, 45 thousandths, something like that. Looks like it. One, probably, yeah, 144.5, and 145, and um, <clears throat> right down there, I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not, um, is the number that's etched in the pinion that gives you your pinion height of 2 inch 859, 2 inch 859 thousandths, it's, it's marked in the gear. Um, I don't know if you can if you can even see it. Eh, you might be able to if the light don't blow it out. Right there, I think you can see it. So we'll go back to the bench and we'll see how close this comes out now. <clears throat> be right back. Okay, back at the bench. Now, <clears throat> so we had uh, 145 thousandths, 145, okay, so we take, go back to the calculator again, take 3 inch minus 0.145 equals 285.5 2 inch 855 now we had the five thousandths difference in the offset of the side cap so we need to add five thousandths to it and that comes up to 286 so according to that um I'm a thousandths low. Um, which a thousandths low or a thousandths high is not going to make that much difference. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish up that pinion. i got to install the outer bearing and the seal and the yoke. I'm going to get that twerked up. And then I'm going to put the I'm going to put the uh, differential in the housing after I put the ring gear on. And uh, we're going to mark it up with some gear marking compound and see how the pattern looks. I'll be back in just a minute. <clears throat> Alright, I'm back. Uh, got, this, got the pinion all in and... Uh, um, with a new crush sleeve and I set the preload on it uh, my previous videos I showed on a 9 inch Ford I showed checking the pinion preload um, <clears throat> what you want to use is a inch pound torque wrench and you want between 15 to 20 inch pounds to turn this pinion gear 
Uh, if you get it too tight, the bearings will burn up. And if it's too loose, um, it's a possibility that it could be noisy. Um, <clears throat> one other thing on this here. Try this again here and see if the camera shuts off. Um, what I was explaining is the, they show you a checking distance, and that's the distance between this flange here and the face of the pinion. So what I've done is I've just taken my dial caliper here, <clears throat> gone from this gear surface to here. which is saying uh, uh, five, t 5 inch 25 thousandths and this bar is 355 thousandths thick let me grab a calculator They give you a checking distance of 467, 467 thousandths from this face here to the pinion, and I've got 466 and a half, so it's within a half a thousand. Um, if they don't put any markings on the gear for your pinion depth, this checking distance is what you need to go by. To set your pinion depth. Um, that part's all done. I got the ring gear on the on the differential carrier. Um, all the bolts are torqued up, and <clears throat> your instructions that come with your ring gear will give you the torque specification for your bolts. So <clears throat> that's what I go by when I torque these down. I'm going to grab the carrier and we'll stick that in there and we'll check the bearing preload. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. <clears throat> These are the, the side shims that you use to, spin, to shape, space this bearing race um, for setting your preload. This just gets set down in the case. This other one here. This gets, gets set down in the case like such. Okay, just like that. And let me get a little screwdriver here to pry this bearing cup over.
this bearing race over here like such. Slide these spacers in like that. And slide this other one over. What I did too before I took it apart is I took a punch. I put a little punch mark at the top of each bearing cap. That way um, you can't flip them around. Get a socket here. We'll check the uh, check the backlash on the reindeer. Feels pretty good. Um, I'm gonna look in the instructions to see what they say. How much backlash I gotta have? I'll be right back. All right, got the dial indicator set up here, and according to the instructions, they want seven to nine thousandths backlash on the ring and pinion. And I've got. about 11 so now I got to take this cap back off and there really wasn't enough preload on the bearing anyway because I was using the same shims over that were in it when I took it apart so I'm going to measure the shims on this side here and I'm going to add about five thousandths to it which will increase my preload on the bearings plus move the ring and pinion over to the right I'm going to try that and we'll see what happens here <clears throat> to loosen this side up here take my dial indicator back off and loosen the other side <clears throat> um, I'm gonna do that off camera here a minute I'll be right back all right 
I got a shim stack here. <clears throat> the shims that I took out of this side were at <clears throat> 73,000, so I, I added, I made this 75, so <clears throat> I added, uh, or 78,000 rather. So I added 5,000s to it, get those tapped in there. this cap back on, this cap here, and the other one. Feels about the same. Probably gonna have to go more. Yep. I gotta go more, so I gotta repeat the process again. So I'll do that and I'll be back with you shortly. Alright, I'm back. <clears throat> I ended up digging out a bunch of my old rear end shims and sorting through them all. Um, I'm at uh, 78 thousandths here, so not much. Looks like we're sitting on about eight. Well, what I'm going to do is lift this up. I'll swing this away. And I'm <clears throat> going to rotate the ring and pinion here. And we'll check it in a couple spots. Eight there. Check one more spot.
between eight and nine there so uh that's pretty good now i'll get the the gear marking compound and we'll mark this up and we'll check to see how the pattern is let me get that here and i'll be right back okay got this <clears throat> little tub of it's like in a sh shoe polish container a little tub of marking grease here that's a regular old acid brush grab a little bit here and we'll mark this on there swing around to the other side <clears throat> <Hang on. clears throat> all right I got you swung around the other side here so you can see this a little bit better and what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this pinion keep the pressure on the ring gear here we're going to see how this looks That looks pretty good. About in the center of the tooth. Now I'll check the coast side here. Rotate it the other way here. See a little better, better, a bit better, and that's your your pattern on the ring and pinion right there. That's about what you're after, right there. Now, if you was running this in like a drag the race application. You might want your pattern a little bit deeper in the tooth but <clears throat> seeing this is just a street gear why uh, that should be good should be nice and quiet and it'll run a long time
All right, I'll be back. All right, back at the bench here now. Um, that part is all done. Uh, torque the, the bearing caps for the carrier down to 65 foot pounds. And I got two bottles of this friction modifier. <clears throat> Here's the other one right here. I'm going to add these to the differential and put the cover on. And uh, that rear end will basically be done. So, um, trying to think if I've missed anything. Uh, just sorting for these spacers takes the longest time. That's why, uh, like doing a nine inch with the adjusters on it, like what I showed before, it's so much easier. So much easier. Um, <clears throat> the the modern Chrysler stuff is the same way. But you need a tool to go in through the axle tubes, but they they also have a threaded adjuster. Um, the shims are okay, but it's a pain in the neck when you got to go searching for them. I got oh I don't know, a couple of wires. I probably got I don't know 300 shims that I've saved over the years from the rear ends I fixed and. You got to go sorting through them all and measuring them, and, and uh, eventually you'll find the right combination. But uh, it just takes a little while. So <clears throat> that's going to be a wrap on this video here, and we'll catch you later. See ya.